Moving on, a quick way to touch upon this. I thought this is absolutely incredible, incredible news. Courtesy of Coachella, they've revealed their lineup for this year. And it feels like this year is going to be the year of festivals for real. Last year, I felt like people just put on the festivals to kind of get out of the pandemic and sort of be like, hey, we're out of the pandemic. We're living free now. Everything's back to normal. But it really wasn't back to normal. But this time, this time, what I've seen so far, this time, it feels like we're actually back to normal. Because this lineup is legitimately maybe one of the most insane ones next to the flipping, what should we call it? Um, next to um, Primavera. This is definitely up there. So this is Coachella 2023 lineup and they've announced it officially now. Zooming in, you see on the Friday headlining Bad Bunny, on the Saturday Blackpink and on the Sunday Frank Bloody Ocean. Yes, Frank Ocean makes his return to the stage at Coachella in april is it april as usual is it april yes it's in april absolutely maddening it's always it's two consecutive weekends so if you miss the first one you get the second one but the lineup is absolutely wild bad bunny on the opening weekend for coachella considering what we've seen of his live show so far considering how incredible his live performances have been this is whole entire time he's been on tour doing arenas and stadiums locking down streets throwing people's phones into the swimming pool it's going to be nuts. I can't wait to see it. So it says Bad Bunny headlining. you got Gorillas as well there. Um, who Gorillas kind of felt like they're like... Um, gorillas are like a worldwide version of Hot Chip in the UK. For whatever reason, the Hot Chip guys keep getting gigs off of the fact that they had like one decent album way back when, right? The Alexis Taylor guy keeps getting DJ gigs. Other people in the band keep getting... Like they keep getting prominent positions, you know, in lineups because of what they did back then with hot chip it feels like gorillas are the same thing for the world they just keep getting all this kind of love for again one decent album back way back when and nothing else since then but hey regardless hot chip gorillas burner boy god damn it chemical brothers k Trinada, blondie becky g um metro booming which would be sick to see him perform actually i wonder if they'll just be like him djing his tracks or it'll be him actually inviting people on stage to perform the tracks that he's done with them maybe some things that he hasn't performed yet he's gonna be sick regardless fkj pusha g toby and gooey wet leg sg lewis yves tumor who i'm awesome who i'm really looking forward to seeing at primavera when i go you got test pilot angel mona messioplex wow why messioplex is so far messioplex must be doing a lot i haven't i haven't heard these men mentioned in a while as a dj the fact that he's listed so high up must mean he's actually doing bits in the u.s that's been a really cool pivot to watch from the outside looking in he went from beefing with nina kravitz being annoyed that he wasn't a hot russian lady right and he wasn't getting the same amount of love as her so now suddenly like playing a flipping premium uh, sorry uh, coachella wow isn't it two friends young blood sick jamie jones is playing sick um and Sh ashniko mala tv girl white gang doshi benny idris elba is playing the opening weekend at coachella we're at uh magdalene bay vintage culture domi jd who's that person don brisky danny lux Mona, what does that say? Nora and Pure, I don't know who they are. Um, over, over Mono playing Uncle Wafles. Loads of people here playing. Ah, I can't see other names. Pausa. Oh shit, Pausa's playing. Shit. Then there's Cruz and Saba. Mad, mad business techno people are playing at Coachella. Or tech house people. That's pretty cool to see, to be honest. Because we're still in the same community, even though, you know, people don't like them. I still feel in the same community. Then on the side, you got Blackpink, Rosalia and Blackpink. Oh, it's a double duo. That's going to be fun. Eric Price, Hollow, Boy Genius, Suicide Boys. Great to see them so far up on the lineup. The Kid Leroy, Miss Me, Charlie XCX is going to smash Coachella to pieces. I don't care. She's got bangers upon bangers upon bangers. Labyrinth, you can miss me with that one. Underworld, cool. Dilgit Doshan, don't know who that is. Eldado Carido, Saw Tuxa, Remy Wolf. <laughs> Jimmy Wilson, see where I have Chromio. Nice. Tale of Us. Shh, look how many people are. Business techno is really businessing, isn't it? Masioplex, Tale of Us, Pausa. I'm surprised what's his name is not there. What's his name? Uh, Michael Bibby. I'm surprised he's not playing. Um, Tell of Us, Young Lean, Muramasa, Yeji. Oh yeah, Yeji's playing as well. I think she's got an album actually coming out. So big up her. That's going to be that's going to be fucking fun. 
she's definitely one of my favorite South Korean DJs out there that isn't Peggy Goo. She's going to be sick. So I think she's got an album coming out as well. Zero Seven Shake, Mark Rebl- Mark Rebla's playing at Coachella. Wow, big up to him. Um, Hiatus Coyote, Dinner Party, Los Fabulous, Cardi- um, Cardiliacs, Kenny Beats, Flo Millie. Big up Flo Millie, one of my favorite. Oh, look, you got also kind of music raw ted brother Co- business techno has taken over kind of music playing flipping coachella that is mad um snail males playing big up her uh hot since 82 tech house is the vibe in it atmospheric house tech house white people playing i'm a piano it's gonna be lit <laughs> <laughs> Earth Gang Umi shoot um Shanice that's gonna be awesome to watch her play live. Bakar is playing Snooze Fest. <gasps> uh, Bakar man, absolute I don't, anyway, let, let's say the battle list. Let's say about DJ Tennis. Look, see? My business techno people playing here. Um let's continue on here. Then on the Sunday, of course, you got my man Frank Ocean, Bjork. Kali Uches, Porter Robinson, Fisher, Chris Lake, A Boogie, Dominic Fike. Wow, Jay Paul. Where the hell they pulled that one out? They're gonna have Jay Paul and Frank Ocean playing in the same festival. Are they? Are they legit? Do they think they're gonna turn up? What? Jackson Wang, Lotto, Blaze, Willow, Glorilla. That's a big one. Big up her. That's a really good thing. Boris Bircher, that guy. That's the, that's fucking Elon Musk's favorite DJ, isn't it? Too many DJs. Shh. Shit, Christine and the Queens. So many DJs playing, isn't it? Business techno has gone off, isn't it? Camel Fat, I see there. Who else I see here? I see Pierre Bourne playing. That's going to be pretty nice. Yo, this is going to be fun. And the good thing is that they stream some of the sets. So this might be one of the best ones to stream if you're not going to be able to go there. But this is a really fun lineup. And it's going to be featuring the Return to the Desert of Calvin Harris is also going to be performing. Oh, this is going to sell out like hotcakes. This is going to be definitely really, really popular, really popping off. So eager to see this going. I do like also the replies where this new trend of the artists who are performing on the stage, writing in the comments. I'm sure it's part of their obligation to kind of reply. You've got Gorillas here, Jackson Wang, Kei Chanada, um, Pierre Bourne, Mark Riblay. Don't you don't even think of for a second of missing my set, Ashaniko, two friends. Look, all people are replying. I think it's part of your deal when you get booked. You have to kind of reply here. Maybe you don't see it's Frank Ocean and Jay Paul. Power said then his crew is sick, isn't it? That's pretty awesome. I'm pretty I'm pretty um hyped on that to be a fair. That looks really, really fun. So big up all of those guys performing at Coachella. When's it happening? April was it April 14th to the 16th, one weekend, and the other one is 21st or 23rd. You know where to see all that sort of stuff. Google it, you'll find it out if you want to be able to go there. But the big news, of course, is Jay Paul, right? The flipping Asian legend, right? Guy here from the UK who is mysterious and, you know, avant-garde and a bit weird and hasn't been seen for a while and dropped a flipping amazing tape out of nowhere and just kind of ducked and hasn't been seen. I think from what I've been hearing on the grapevine, he does do some work behind the scenes, like songwriting stuff under a pseudonym and stuff. But instead of that, he just kind of avoids the limelight in any kind of shape or way form, even though he's incredibly talented, which is annoying, but also goes to speak to his actual level of talent and not wanting to be some social media freak out there. But this is Kurt Pitchfork says, Jay Paul to perform his first live show ever at Coachella 2023. That's an absolute crazy place to debut what you sound like and showcase what you're doing or what you've been up to for all these years at Flipping Coachella. Mad, isn't it? But big up him and I'm eager to see how he does it, to be fair. Um, and I'm going to be rooting for him because I'm a big fan of his music. So Jay Paul is set to take stage at Coachella this year, making his cinematic musical first ever live performance. He takes the stage on Sunday, April 16th, and then again on April 23rd. Other musicians on the bill seem to be pretty excited with connection. Others tweeting, forget about me performing. I'm going to see Jay Paul. In 2019, the musician issued um, Leak What 0413, Bait Ones, an official version of his unfinished debut album that leaked in 2013, along with two previously unreleased songs. He since marked the 10th anniversary of his track BTSTU with remixes and archival material and made rare cameo on Atlanta earlier this year. This continued to work with his brother, A.K. Paul, on the Paul Institute operation, which issued a six song EP titled Summer 2020 in a titular year so yeah he's definitely been off the grid definitely been doing his own thing but i'm curious to see what he does do in in terms of a live performance is it going to be him on stage with the lights on live is it going to be him you know early days of weekend when he wouldn't like to perform with a light on him and we'll kind of sing in the darkness is it going to be him as a hologram is it going to be him off site streaming a show from a studio somewhere is it going to be him doing a dj set live performance dancing tiktok style on stage in inviting people to do his tracks for him 
who knows i'm curious to see how it develops when it goes forward but that is crazy and it's going to be super fun to see when he does end up performing and of course we have to mention the fact that Bad Bunny and Frank Ocean are on the same flipping lineup at Coachella. That's absolutely incredible. I think Bad Bunny, in terms of rep, reputation, in terms of a live performer, we're going to be definitely seeing something fun from him because these live performances in arenas have been crazy to witness, or, you know, just online. Um, to see the reaction that he's been getting from parts of Latin American stuff is going to be crazy. To see that same thing happening in the in the US and considering the amount of Spanish-speaking people that live over there is going to be wild also. But the key, of course, has to be Frank Ocean. And just courtesy of flipping Pitchfork. And I'm not going to be duped by this again. I legitimately went to Primavera Festival the first year that we went. I think it might be 2019. Maybe 2018. So I forgot what year it was. But it was the year that he basically was marking his return to performing live again. Outside of what he did, pitch performances for Blonde. And I went to go Primavera to see him perform that, you know, album or whatnot. Another kind of album cuts I'm a big fan of from obviously Channel Orange and Nostalgia Ultra and blah, blah, blah. And the guy, if I'm not mistaken, cancelled the week before we left. And I think since then he did loads of other gigs that he scheduled and then cancelled and didn't do. And then from there I was like, you know what, never again. And I should have known better because I don't think I've ever gone to a festival primarily going to see one person except for the one time i went to love box one year to go see dj harvey play which is crazy i paid like 60 pounds um from a person you know who's reselling a ticket on like facebook or something just to go see dj harvey play one set and i think it was like on the imagine if love box festival was on like a friday and a saturday it might be on a saturday and it might be like at 4 p.m so it's like a couple of hours before it ended and i paid 60 quid to see dj harvey play and that's the only time i've done it usually when you go to festivals you're going to see many different people in the lineup because it's all point of a festival right you want to get to you want to get as much out of your money as possible it's kind of it's, it's value for money you pay 200 pounds and you get to see you know bad bunny rosalia frank ocean and stuff and if you look if you break it down a ticket for each of those guys is going to cost you about 100 quid anyway so you're already up then plus all the other people you may see that you may not be familiar with and you know other local acts djs and stuff it kind of adds to the whole ambiance of it so it definitely is um good value for money but again lesson learned for me never go to a festival thinking you're going to see one person in mind that's really foolhardly and dumb of me and i definitely did pay the big price for that but since then I haven't been sold in the fact that Frank Ocean is going to perform anywhere until he actually performs. And as a fan of him, it is a bit annoying. I know he's gone through a lot of personal tragedy recently, especially with his death of his younger brother in tragic circumstances and that car crash. Absolutely horrifying. I think most Frank Ocean fans have still got the memory of seeing a video of him kind of on the side of the street crying at the sight of the crash itself and kind of weeping and stuff. And what that's done to their family can be, un you know, words cannot describe. And I'm sure he's got his own demons he has to battle with that sort of stuff. But the lack of communication with the fans the lack of kind of update and whatnot and it's just i don't know i've, I've never been a fan of it all that kind of, I, I understand some artists don't like to talk to the press but i think you owe your fans something the ones who kind of give you the career that you flipping enjoy to kind of give them i don't know just updates whenever you are planning to do something and launch something not everything has to be a surprise or without an announcement that kind of mysterious thing kind of gets boring very quickly but if he's going to be performing, if this is a mark of an album rollout coming forward, I'm all for it. Um, I'm sure the stuff he's doing with Homer and how successful that jewelry brand has been since he's kind of launched it is definitely kind of, you know, I'd assume if you're a musician, because I'd, I'd imagine designing and making stuff like that is probably way more fulfilling and less, less harder work than sitting down and trying to craft a flipping song like pyramids or something right it must be excruciating to put that sort of stuff together and put together a project and especially have that and let it go to the public right not have perfectionism over it and whatnot but come on man give us one more tape please give us one more tape frank give us a couple more performances come to the uk again don't cancel your gigs because if this is what we get going forward it's going to be sick but if you are planning to go to coachella and you're going there only to see frank ocean please please use your head right don't all don't only buy the ticket to see him also buy a ticket to see all the other proliferate of people that i mentioned already in the pod who are also performing right there's many 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 names on here of people that you can go and see who are also going to provide you with a good show and are definitely going to go so don't just go just because of frank um because if he ends up cancelling it's going to absolutely break your heart as it did when i went to flipping Rivera with the sole intention of seeing him and he didn't go it was obviously horrendous but i'm happy that he's going cannot wait to see him perform hopefully 
um, this set is going to be live streamed, but knowing Frank and how much of a you know a stickler he is for how things are presented and whatnot, I can assume he's probably going to be clicking X or ticking X on that box and not wanting to have his stuff put, you know live streamed on YouTube because it probably cheapens the product in his eyes. I'm hundred percent sure of it. I'm hundred percent sure of it. I don't expect that to change, but hey, what can you do? 